Uh, episode 101 is coming to you without one of our main guys here. It's Mark Halpin is in bed sick. He's a fallen soldier. He's coming yes. down with a tummy bug or something along them lines. So he's not, he's very under weather. He was supposed to come in, but half an hour he was late drop out. So yeah. I've been uh, filling in. Was it? Yeah, it's like a player getting injured. In the, in. Drafted in. Yeah, player getting injured in the warm up. So I have to. Yeah. <laughs> and Ashton's here as well. Thank you, Ashton. I don't really have a choice. <laughs> Maybe bitchy. <laughs> with Vinci, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, nice of you to join us, man. Um, hopefully, Mark will be well enough with the tender, loving care of Breed. Uh, he will be well enough for Friday, the twenty second of April. You have to get your tickets, folks. Paperchooses.com forward slash buy hyphen tickets, or just go on to our Instagram bio. Niall Basil Kennedy and Spike O'Sullivan, they're going to be class. I, I actually during the week I went to Basil's house and. I was only there three seconds and he gave me a tea, cup of tea straight away and I was there chilling with Basil and his wife Neve just in the front of their estate and I had some crack, I had some crack. They had these Olympic races and they have really competitive neighbours that are a little bit older than their own sons so they have different starting zones and then, oh. yeah. So it's a fair advantage for all the kids kind of. Yeah, it is so good and it just, it felt like summer and it just, it was so pure and, uh, Pure entertainment. Do yeah. they live in Garden City? No, Crea Domain. Oh, because wasn't there like the Garden City Olympics or Summer Olympics or Games or something? Yeah, he yeah. Was yeah. in the yeah. podcast before. He might yeah. be saying, yeah. what was it, Garden Leagues or... Oh, yeah, well, the... Street what was leagues. it, the Street, street Leagues? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. true, actually, yeah. 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 And then remember in the night of the live show, Breed was talking about uh, sport. There's this man and he used to run, like sport competitions that he was called sport in the garden city in the sand hole and people in the crowd instantly thought that like there was there was uh, poor behavior going on they were making allegations guys. yes yeah yeah but there was none of that in going thanks be to god well maybe not in. anyway I'm leaving that now <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah so basil and spike are coming spike is gonna be class uh spike is like the cork basil that's the way i'm picturing this in my head anyway so like it's just imagine two basils on the stage like, yeah. so it's a no-brainer and um uh, we've two songs in store for you that is going to be unreal and um we've shane Byrne. Like Shane Byrne is just we, we instantly go to the boxers because we were creating the hype yeah. but like Shane Byrne is just Shane Byrne is the mullet man <laughs> yeah like yeah like, I'm looking forward to Shane Byrne now because like he does have all the TV presence and like he's mm. an Ireland rugby and Lions rugby player like he's very well established mm. and like I think he will be good because you were saying was it he was on the uh, Brendan O'Connor show and he's very yeah. good on that so he'd be well able to talk and be well able well, to talk yeah. crack I'd yeah. say he'll have good stories from yeah. Yeah. all his tours and stuff. Like, yeah. one of his, you know you can have a good crack with someone when they say, nothing in life has been straightforward for me. That's what he's come <laughs> out with. And then he gives an example, and you're like, okay, yeah, fair enough. His stag do was, took place the same weekend of, um, his stag do took place the same weekend of his, uh, his debut for Ireland. Oh, and gosh. they actually, like, his whole family travelled over into this very... Like, he actually, his first game was against Romania, and his last game was against Romania. Oh, so, like, nice. how rare is yeah. that as well? Yeah, full for, circle. Yeah, so they went over to Romania for the stag do. Whatever. I don't know why it was so tight that they had to... I, I don't know... He must have been pulled in last minute or something to play. And yeah. that's how he got his first cap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, like, his first... And I'm sure we'll get him to tell the story, which may be a lot better, but like his first throw in was, uh, or line out, as they actually call him, is, um, was with his family right behind him. And there was absolute dead silence yeah. as he threw it in, like, because, like, just don't mess this <laughs> up, you know? They're all like, doing the same motion behind him. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's guys. That's a good story, yeah. Like, it's just, cr yeah, it's very unique anyway, like, um, yeah. He's, he's a good fella. So uh, we have Shane Byrne and we've the Fab and Flood. That's just going to be yeah. The so heavy yeah. yeah. And we did yoga on the beach. Yoga is going to feature at some point. We're just we'll leave it at that. But like, I was uh, I haven't told you about doing the yoga. But, no, um, but uh, first of all, me. if you're a couple and uh, you want something exotic to do, I'd recommend do yoga together. Because it was very We've never intimate. done yoga together and probably never will, but... No, on. you've no, you've no passion or no interest in it. <laughs> True? You pick your words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not for yoga. You're no, not I'm for not yoga. for yoga. Yeah, that's okay. You don't, you don't have to be. But Mark and I were doing yoga and I thought, oh, J.D. Mackie. Oh, sorry, you were talking about your Mark's coupling, not our coupling. <laughs> 
when you referred to <laughs> a couple you meant you and Mark. No, I meant like if if both of you are open to it. I'm not saying that Mark and I are going to do yoga every week down on the beach. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, just <laughs> we're intimate and passionate just, for you. <laughs> I just mean that if you've a man and a no, sorry. <laughs> take it back. If you're in a relationship and if you're both into yoga, do it. That's all. Yeah, we're, we're in together. 2022. All right, guys. Recommendation of the week. Yes, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Because there was this, she got us doing all these poses. So, like, we got feet up against each other and hands up against each other. And I don't know what that was. <laughs> but it was, we, you twisted to the side and Mark twisted to the other side and you held each other's knees. And I don't know. It was just very. Very uh, personal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very romantic. You wouldn't do it with everyone, like it was. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> you only do it with the ones you love. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how do you find it? Yeah, no, it was go crack now. Like looking at you, still struggle in the sound of balls go crack. <laughs> yeah, and obviously, we, like, right. So I was going to give away a bit more, but like the scenery was beautiful. It was. Yeah, everything and. Uh, Ashley, who was the yoga instructor, was very good crack. She mm. went well up for it, like so. Made the, she was. the whole experience very enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. But, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was going to. Uh, Friday, 22nd of April, be there, be square. Yeah, you have to. Please. And tell your. Do you know what? Tell three people you know. You don't have to. Just go up to someone in Pettits and say, Paper Tuesdays are on a gory little here on Friday, 22nd of April. And take your change and just leave or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. You get the picture. Yeah. We're, we're very, we're very much. But I'm confident though that we're going to have a big crowd. But uh, I want to spread the word as wide as possible because since the pandemic, we now leave things a little bit later because this is such a novelty now. We've things to do, so we like to, we like to be whores for choice, and we like to say, oh no, I'll just lastminute.com and I'll just take that there. So I'm calling you out, post-pandemic person. Please just buy your tickets. Yes. I think that's a hard enough sell. I think you rubbed it in enough now. Yeah. <laughs> Jane, you have a game for us. I do. So obviously I was drafted in late here, so I decided I had to bring in a game to this to fill up the space because I had no idea what I was going to talk about. <laughs> so, okay, you can call it what you want. It's either this or that, or would you rather. So the first question, it kind of goes more gory as you go along. So, okay. uh, football or hurling? It's for both of you to answer. Right, this is a natural question. I'm yeah. going to say hurling and you're going to say? Well, it depends. Playing or Ooh. watching? Open to our interpretation. <laughs> playing, football, watching, hurling. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, playing, hurling, watching, hurling. And Shane? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I definitely watching hurling is better than watching football. But I'm kind of 50 50 between football and hurling. Like, I do enjoy playing both. But it kind of brings in the atmosphere of it. Like, for, like, if I was playing, like playing with Castellan, I prefer playing hurling than I do. I play football. I can enjoy going to hurling more because there's more kind of. Great, sure. great to it, and people like everyone's everyone in the hurling setup is there because they fucking love hurling. Like, and then football is a bit more professional because it's obviously mm-hmm. higher level, higher grade, it's senior, so everything's taken more seriously. Like, there's it's setting a tone of being serious, and we want to be that best football team in the county. Whereas, like with the hurling, you go in there, it's like we're gonna fucking give it our all and try get promotion this year. It's that kind of grit to it. That's more, more like we have a point to prove. Were you at the game down? It was in the South Horsewood. Were you at the Horsewood? No, I was injured, so I didn't go down. Oh, right. Yeah, Mark told me a story though that he um, did. He end up getting I no. I don't think he actually got a yellow card, but he. I think he just. You're saying like he was that riled up or something that he 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 uh, used that motivation then to uh, to commit an injury yeah. and uh, he commit a foul probably more so, but. Uh, it caused uproar because it was just so out there and all. But like, um, Mark was just doing what he does. So like, he was just real clear headed. Whereas I am the exact opposite on the field. I am the most irrational <laughs> person when it comes to a, sma- a decision on the hurling field. If it was off the hurling field, I might, I might take the upper ground, the upper high ground, and say, yeah, but yeah, and, and you know this sort of thing. But when a sideline ball goes against me, I am. It's as if someone has. Taken all my porridge and I've not seen it for the rest of the day. <laughs> Goldilocks is just yeah, angry Goldilocks. Yeah, yeah, it's the injustice of it. Yeah, I'd be the same. Like I'd have a very hot head playing hurling football, and it'd always be the same that I start fighting Mark and come in and try to break up. So yeah, <laughs> man, yeah, beware. But, beware. Yeah, I definitely calmed down the last few years, but like yeah, when I was kind of like starting off playing adult hurling football, like I would have been very very yeah. raw. Um yeah, so then we on to the next one: rugby or soccer? Rugby. Rugby. 
Yeah, no, but exactly opposite. I have oh. I, I do enjoy watching rugby, but it's probably Capital Ireland and like I couldn't really give a shit other than that. Like everyone's all like if you're into rugby you're at Sport Leinster and Ireland obviously from where we are, but I couldn't really care less. I watch yeah. the Six Nations and I enjoy watching the Ireland playing rugby and I don't really Mark is an even lower interest yeah, in rugby Mark, than you. Yeah, I don't think Mark even watches Six Nations. No. And but, it's gas because I thought everyone kinda of has a nominal interest, but no, he doesn't even is this match going to matter if he doesn't even know like you Yeah, know? like like I wouldn't like if I would say if I had something on and there were Ireland Six Nations on, I was like I probably would just do the other thing. Like I wouldn't really mm. focus on that. Whereas like if Ireland were playing in soccer, like I'd make it my business to try and watch or even go to the match. Right. Do big, big into Irish soccer. Then that's why you and Freeco are so close. Yeah, my <laughs> my other Freeco has Connor Moore likes to call him. Uh, yeah, yeah, Freeco's a good man for going to the Wexford Youths uh, hooligan. Say him and uh, Hooper and there's another man, Mick, their friend they always call. Mick Purcell. Mick Purcell. Big shout out to Mick Purcell. Yeah, they come to the uh, extra matches and they even go to the few of the way matches like they were up in Bray there last week and everything. So, yeah, big fans of the Wexford uh, soccer. And what to be a Wexford soccer fan, what do you need? I think patience. Yes. Um, resilience. Tissues to cry into. <laughs> yeah. You need a car now to get the fucking down to Ferry Carry because, like, yeah, so I wouldn't be arsed now driving down Ferry Carry watching my extra play. Like, Freak was that nearly every Friday, and say if it was say if it was more in the centre, like maybe it was in in Scotty or Ferns or something, I'd probably go if there was a soccer match on there, like and go to support them. But like, come down to fucking Ferry Carry. If you're not like if you're not within say a half an hour driving, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, but see, I'd say it is a half hour Ferry Carry now with the motorway, no. Ah, uh, a bit more. Well, you'll be Not from putting here. the foot down, yeah. Yeah, from here, yeah. A big shout out to Ian Dowdall, who was doing the sound yesterday. And he revealed that he is following Eamon Ryan's advice of driving sore. Yeah. And he says that, now in fairness, he is commuting to Dublin, so that's his fuel bill is probably higher, but he's saying he's saving 30 euro a week by going at 100 kilometres an hour oh. instead of 120. Now, I don't think that would interest you, actually. No. Yeah. <clears throat> no. Couldn't care. I no. did the exact same. I got, like... Oh yeah, you <laughs> like my. I, I'm very impatient driver. I I get severe road rage when mm. like anyone's driving slow in front of me. I have it's the speed limit and you drive it and you don't go under, you don't go over. Especially going into Gory there, like on that kind of the, the Arclough Road or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. People drive. Yeah, because that's a hundred. Yeah, and like it's perfectly fine to go hundred. Yeah, and people go eighty and under, mm. and I'm just like, get the fuck out of there. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's the same if I was driving to Dublin. Like if I'm on motorway, like I'm the. Cruise control lights just speed set. Uh, once again, more weight, 120, set it. Done. Go. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't shift off it unless like there's traffic. Just yeah. stay 120. Yeah. Um, yeah, so next question. Golf or tennis? Oh. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably. Golf. Oh, God. Probably golf. I don't know. I was going to say tennis, but I don't even know why. Like. Yeah. Um, the Masters. I didn't know my dad was as much into it. He was, was all a, over was Lowry. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's what, that's kind of what made me think. I didn't even know it was on until I heard two consultants in work talking about it, and I was like, "What are they talking about?" And then I went and googled Shane Lowry, and I realised he was doing pretty okay at the moment. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Where is he at the moment? Or He's tied third or fourth. Anyway. I think he was. He was doing well yesterday. Went to four under, but now I think he's two under. I just think he's tied third, maybe. Um, but yeah, yesterday he was second and he was going very well. That's just, it's the same thing, my opinion on like golf and tennis will be the same as like soccer and rugby. I love golf and like I watch golf like a good bit and then I'd only watch Wimbledon for the tennis. Like I do like watching Wimbledon but I wouldn't really. Yeah, but I'd say I'd watch like maybe one match and then that'd be it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. If it's I, I think, as well. You're not yeah. going to be big watching television in the summer. In the summer, yeah. 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 I think I like the idea of like mm. going to a little strawberries, and, strawberries mm. and pims mm. and that kind of crap. Yeah. 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 Um, just on the golf, uh, no, it's gone, actually. Yeah, yeah, on the golf there, like, watch it. Like, I think because I'm so into, like, more into golf is because there's good Irish golfers and, like, oh, just yeah. the best in the world. Yeah. Like, like, Shane Lowry, especially Shane Lowry, fucking low Shane Lowry with passion. I, uh, and he's just because he's pure Offaly, pure Irish, loves the hurling. Like when he's in Ireland, he goes to the Offaly, mm-hmm. Offaly GA matches and he loves it. And when he won uh, the Open there a few years, the British Open a few years ago, like he, he went back down to his local pub and the streets were littered with people. It was like a, like a, a, a yeah, kind of final, like people going there to drink and he was in the middle of the bar with the fucking trophy and giving yeah. it off. like, just because he's just a regular lad, but he's fucking classic golf. He tipped me 30 quid one time. Yeah. And served him in boxes. Very and nice. I think he did he go up to Blue Light? 
Yes, he did. On the on the way down to Yes. Awfully. Yeah. Was there a big crowd there? Did you go on that night or did um, you go? No, I wasn't there, but the football team went up to see him. I wasn't training though. The Stars team? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The local yeah. club team. Um I think there like I don't I think he went there because he knew that people wouldn't like necessarily go there if they knew that he was there. Do you know the kind of I think it was just the standard locals and druggies that were there. <laughs> Classic. Mm. Um just on I remember now, Lowry. Uh, I think he gave something, oh, this is classic Irish folk tale now, but I think he gave a ludicrous amount of money towards Offaly GA, and they now have the Faithful Fields uh, Centre of Excellence as a result of it, and it is a really impressive top class facility, mm. and it's something in the hundreds of thousands that apparently he gave. Fuck. It's, uh, you used to drive mm. by it, uh, it's on. It's near Burr, and it's a great setup altogether. Do you know what they do well actually there? The branding, I'm sure you would agree with this now Shane, but like, mm posters up and visually catching your attention and actually making you feel something in bar like in the dressing room oh like, right as oh, in, a, you're yeah. now you're in awfully ga quarters so like instead of just you know the fine building and you know you appreciate the fine building everything was about you know eat well do this and, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> right. yeah big feel good factor <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, <laughs> Gory to win the senior hurling or win the intermediate football? I'm guessing by, by the other Ooh. answer, it to will win. be the first. Oh, as in like to yeah. prefer? Yeah. Which would you prefer? Uh, would right. you prefer them to win the senior hurling again, or would you prefer them to win the intermediate and be a dual club? It's four years since we. It's four years this year yeah, since man. we won it's senior hurling. Like, that feels like fucking last, like two years ago. Yeah. So I don't like being a winner. I don't like the phrase one in a row team, so I'd like to <laughs> win them again. Ash your Yeah, I think there'd be more crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, her her Our social car swan did Ash Keen. Thank you, Ashton. No, no. <laughs> uh, so holiday abroad or staycation? Holiday oh. abroad, done. Well, yeah. she was Ashton wants that at the moment. I big fan of staycation. When you do it right, no, you have to can spend we a lot just go to? Our holiday last year in Leitrim. Yeah, but can we just can go we to just our most recent staycation? The one where we nearly got murdered by the Airbnb serial killer. Man. Oh yes, so I just thought <laughs> you, like you just stay in your man's house. So. I appreciate this, but um, we were at a time Michael when the whole decided country decided that he would book. Well, you should no, book actually, this out. my fault because I told Michael to go ahead and book it, and he sent me photos. I didn't go into the Airbnb and actually look at it, like what it said. And we were staying in the man's house. Now the house looked fine and the house was fine. A little dated, but it was fine. But your man was weird. Mm. He was really, really weird. And like we locked our door at night time because I would be afraid that he we would have woke up with him in the bed beside us. <laughs> he was odd. Really, really odd. Lonely, I'd say very lonely. Yeah, and obviously Michael, you knew that this man was gonna be in the house. I did, yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't do I don't think I'd do it again. But see, that can we have a bit of context? It to be a nice, like, Oh yeah, yeah, I Mine did. I thought this was me, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a little bit of context. Um, everyone was there were very few properties yeah, there last year, but that was anyway. But uh, yeah, I think uh, stay in a hotel. This is another recommendation. I'm so preachy. Uh, stay in a ho- in a hotel and just stay in the hotel. Don't leave it for two days, and you'll be for quite relaxed. Yeah. It's a queer nice feeling. Have you ever done it with Roisin or anything? Yeah, we go to Seafield the other time. Obviously, it's only fucking 10 minutes outdoors. But like, <laughs> I like Seafield now. The the whole like, it's very fancy and very posh. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and like I love the spa, the like the heated outdoor pool out there. Yeah, like, it's very nice. It's unbelievable. Like, you'd be like, you'd have, like nearly be melting as you're coming out of it. Like, it's just so relaxing. You're, you feel so good after being in there. And then obviously, go for dinner and drinks, and mm-hmm. the food's really nice. Mm-hmm. And, the like staff are really good there, so I actually really like it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm probably like 70 30 in favor of holiday abroad because I love going abroad and I love going, like, especially going to the likes of America or like like sunny holidays in Spain and stuff. I love mm. doing that. But I also love, I really, I think this summer I'm going to try get out to the West and go to like see all this because obviously like, I have the cameras and the drone and stuff. So I think if I like a view, it'd be. Mm. Like hidden. I think holidays in Ireland are great if you've nice weather. Yeah. Like you can't beat a holiday here. It's just you can't guarantee the weather. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That is the pain. Yeah. Like if you're going there and it's raining and you just kind of put it down. You can't. Damp you can't down. really do well. Momo says like he dressed for the weather, but like, <laughs> who really wants to be in like massive big rain coat, yeah. soaked to the skin, like? 
Yeah. Oh, no. It was like I mean, Donegal was great when it was nice weather. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not, that's one of my favorite holidays. When like uh, when we went up to uh, Bree's house from mm-hmm. Mac and Reed and like like it was just so out of the way and the weather was unbelievable yeah. and like you're yeah. literally on like the furthest part like you couldn't really go for from here you can't really go further away and like i don't think i like that's the first time that i've seen like water that that blue it was so nice out there. yeah it was lovely yeah um and i like like that during the pandemic when obviously uh northern ireland and all was reopened for us uh, and everyone was going to belfast yeah. me and ocean went to belfast and exploited there <laughs> uh, lack of lockdown and that was one that was another one of the holidays i really really loved because we got like a really uh, not a really nice hotel and it was really cheap because obviously there was mm. not met no one was coming from abroad so like they were rock bottom prices and you're we right in the center of belfast and like all the restaurants and like bars now were kind of mostly mostly freely open and like the food places we went were unreal because roisin is like gluten free and like she can't have the areas out like so she, like there's a limited number of places we can eat I always have to make sure, sure beforehand there's some priority and like we went to this one place called Pete's Punks in Belfast if you're ever there you make sure you go nicest pizza place I went like it was, I think it was only like 11, euro, 11 pounds for a pizza and they give you a whole fucking A3 list of um toppings and it's unlimited toppings you can put on whatever you want right. and do cocktails as well and cocktails oh, are wow. savage there's a uh, you know the squashies sweets there was yeah. uh squashies uh cocktail there and it tasted the exact same <laughs> and it was unbelievable and again with like little drumsticks in like placed in yeah, it yeah. and me and Ross were drinking so many of them and like i think a lot of people were as well and they ran out of drumsticks and we were ordering again it's like I'm really sorry we don't have drumsticks like i don't give a shit about the sweets give me the <laughs> but yeah i know belfast is class but yeah like me and Ross were planning to go to new york and boston Ooh. at the end of the year because oh no it's not boston it's philadelphia New York for life because she has relations there, so I can just go over and visit them and really looking forward to that now. Very good. Ashton, this in three days' time, Ashton will be in New York. Touch wood. Three days' time when this is released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how I talk as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, but touch wood and God willing. Negative Ashton, negative Ashton. That's what we pray for now. Yeah. Uh, are you going with family or are you going with yeah. friends? Or? Family. So my mum was 50 in 2020 and we booked it then. To go, it's just been cancelled and cancelled yeah. and cancelled, so we're finally getting to go now. Yeah. And your nan is how old? 78? She will be 78 this year, yes. Okay. And she's going with us. Very like, good. the woman has never been in, like, a big city. She's probably in Dublin, like... Was she ever in Cork? Like, I'd say Galway? maybe 10... No, not 10 years ago. Maybe, like, five years ago. She's probably in Dublin City Centre. She went on her honeymoon to Paris in, like, the 670s, 60s, 70s. And she's like, sure I was in Paris. That was a big city. I was like, nan... Paris in the 60s is not in any way yeah. comparable yeah. to New York. So we've been trying to like show her street view videos of New York to try and get her like accustomed it's to some it. culture shock. But yeah. like she has no, she's like, I have been in cities. We're like, oh, no. Yeah, the visit, yeah. like the like high pace life yeah. in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna hate her, like, she wants to, uh, yeah, I think she will be a little bit overwhelmed, mm-hmm. but she's like, I'll be fine. She'll you be know, very okay. open to it though. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's got really getting like looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. How long yeah. you over? Um, we go on Saturday and we come back Thursday, so five days, six days, yeah. You've got to fit in there, you know, like, we've got your itinerary. So mum does, I've been there before, so we're going, it's me, my mum, my sister, my nan, and then my mum's friend, her daughter and her sister. So, um, Dave, Anne and Kate have been in New York before, and I've been before, so my mum, my nan, my sister, and Anne's sister haven't been there before, so... Mum has like a full, mum's the kind of person that when she goes on a holiday, like she has like an itemized list of things that she's doing like every yeah. day, full itinerary, like we get up at seven and we go here at eight and that kind of thing. So mum is like trying to plan everything. Um, but I'm like, mum, we're on a holiday. Like we don't need to be getting up at like seven o'clock in the morning. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, fitting in a good bit of stuff, but I've been before. So yeah. It doesn't bother me if I don't really see anything, but yeah. Yeah. Back, yeah. Looking forward to getting on a plane. Very good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Right. Next question. Was it, what was that question? Uh, it was uh, holiday abroad or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So now on, moving on to Gory for our next two questions. Uh, Gory. Raspberry or Table 41? Oh. Oh, this is a toughie. You've this been to both, have you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to both? No, I've been to neither. So, uh, oh. obviously, this, this question came to mind because Michael and Ash very kindly got me a uh, Table 41 oh. voucher. So, and that is very graciously accepted by me and Ocean, and we'll be going very soon. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to that now, but oh yeah, I haven't been a raspberry either. I keep Just, meaning to go. So but. they're very different, mm. as in. 
I think you have to do both. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're a different think, night. Like, yeah. That's the beauty of Gory. That's a really solid thing about Gory. You know? So, like, Table 41 is kind of, like, amazing food, amazing wine. I don't think they do cocktails there. No, don't think so. Um, Table 41 is Relatively, there. like, it's not cheap, but it's not, like, crazy mm. expensive, like... Um, and the food is really like it's not real fancy food it's just wow. really really good mm. food and then raspberry unbelievable cocktails and the food's kind of like a little bit fancier um, but their menu changes really frequently which is nice but yeah I don't know very mm. hard they're two completely different vibes like raspberry trying to be kind of like kind of the fashionable place to be mm. and kind of like I don't know, like more of a like night out kind of vibe. Yeah. Where yeah. Table Forty One is kind of more chilled and laid back yeah. kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. But both are very good. Yeah, it's, it's almost like yeah, Table Forty One gets the, the food, but maybe Raspberry gets the ambiance or uh, yeah. no. Well, that's... it depends on what you're going for. Yeah. 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 Now I'm looking forward now to go we'll try and the bottle now over next month or two. The one thing that I do have against Raspberry is it's very like it can be not depending on where you're sitting in there it can be very noisy yeah. there's you know that bit that we sat in the last time we were there it's kind of a low roof down like it's kind of at the back a low roof and it's like very hard to hear people because mm. it's just kind of echoey there yeah yeah but, that was just before christmas like it was full house wasn't it yeah it was jammers yeah yeah but so yeah no, we yeah. didn't really answer um, that one <laughs> i'm gonna say chip 41 mm. Yeah, I, I think it would, like... Obviously, because you're not drinking cocktails, so I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just something about it as well, the fact that we now have a Michelin bib in, in Gore. It's mm. kind of, like, that's what I like as well. So, yeah, table four. Very good. Uh, so now, uh, changing uh, food menu, Sorrento's or King Cod? I haven't been to either in ages. Yeah. I'm going to say King Cod. Yeah, I'll be the same, man. Yeah. Loyal. <laughs> have I ever been in King Cod? No. And I've been in Sorrento's. Yeah. So I'm going to have to say Sorrento's yeah. because I haven't been to King Cod. It's good. It's good to be very balanced yeah. with all our eateries and more. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, last two, I think Sorrento's have changed the owners now. So the last two times I've been there, it hasn't been great. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So like, I think the quality has dipped. So I think I'd definitely go King Cod. Um, yeah. Like that last night I was up in Dublin. I like, was Roshin's mom's birthday and we surprised her away. Uh, Dinner up in Dublin in Elfin Castle on Tebow Bar. Very, very good. nice. It went very good there. But the same thing happened. We were like at the front door and we were right under a speaker. Mm. And like Roshi was laughing at her mom and dad because when we were trying to talk, they were like, huh? <laughs> and Roshi was like, what's wrong with you? like, the fucking, they can't hear you with the speaker. <laughs> but yeah, same. But was, the food was very good. Like, um, and then we went to uh, the tree arena for the ABBA orchestra. So it was just basically like four people dressed up as ABBA singing and there was a full orchestra band. It was very good now. Um, what, where was I going with that? <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Elephant Castle. What was the question? Um, yeah. Was this table forty one speakers? Uh, I was I was going back then. Like yeah, so after it was going back to oh, Sorrento. Yeah, so going back to Sorrento. So yes. yeah, obviously we went back and we were a bit hungry. And after digging up, and we got I uh, just like chips out Sorrento and like this morning I woke up feeling nice. like shit. Like oh. yeah. So yeah, Gosh, Cod- that was a, an Cod- interesting Cod- way to cr- finish a night because we were parked obviously Ocean Lamb doesn't drink so we were parked at the tree in a car park so we just drove from like straight, straight back down so like I, we went like back through the toll bridge like all that so like if you're going that road there's no actual chippers oh along, along that way into the coast yeah unless you're going into in. into like Donny Rock somewhere but like we weren't yeah. fucking bothering that like, yeah. we got home obviously actually if you're ever doing that again do you remember that chipper we got those chips from um, uh, where is it oh it's near Fox Rock we got them when we were up in Dublin. Oh, Dean's Grange. Dean's um, Grange. There's a classic chipper, an old time chipper, a bit like King Like Cod, an Italian chipper. Yeah. In and the, the old paper. Just beside um, the old the paper bags. I, we Dean's actually, Grange. we went by that and we pulled in and it was closed. Uh, it was half, oh, 11, half 11 and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. And I wasn't, yeah. Ha- I wasn't even half 11, it was like four past seven and it was, yeah. You gave it a well, shot. Yeah, it wasn't even, sorry, it was 11. And it was yeah. Closed, so yeah. it was for Saturday night, maybe it's just, it's not around like busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no. They close early. But I'd say it's that busy that they can afford to close yeah. early, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, just a footnote, uh, I was in Patrick's Cathedral last night. If you're ever looking for a, a good concert, and now I know it's classical music, uh, Patrick's Cathedral, the, the, I've never heard a sound quite like it because you can hear a pin drop and it's just perfect acoustics. 
mm. and uh, they have Queen uh, by candlelight in December and they have the Four Seasons by Vivaldi in the next few months so if you're thinking of treating someone I'd recommend that where is it? Uh, where's Patrick's Cathedral? Patrick's Cathedral is near Stephen's Green it's, and it's near Christchurch yeah um, yeah kind of in between the two isn't it? yeah and oh, for a good night I would really recommend it and um, yeah my brother was leading the UCD Orchestra right. so it was uh, quite the achievement his count final yeah, yeah. <laughs> well said yeah a proud yeah. moment for the Dwyer family yes absolutely yeah. Patrick was loving it yeah. Uh, so, My Street or the Royal Garden? My Street. This is, uh, oh, I think I'll just go with the Royal Garden. <laughs> just, uh, Why? I don't want to. Oh, yeah, there's, so the, yeah, there's facts behind this. So, right, yeah. ignore, ignoring <laughs> those facts that we're not going to mention because it, they're inconclusive evidence. <laughs> um, yes, innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I go My Street Food. Uh, <laughs> Or like the I think the food out there is like I was like the spicy corn or the massive man and like they have other stuff there. I got the honey chicken. Have you ever had the general size chicken? Mm-hmm. Oh, really nice. It's like next, sticky yeah. chicken. Yeah, yeah, that's what the honey chicken was like. I okay. love that. Like yeah. there's like those little crispy yeah, bits yeah, chicken. Yeah, yeah. Savage. And um, yeah, I went to the. Road, I haven't. Like, I either go to uh, like the only reason for uh, drug out there is because everyone always says that's the best Chinese in glory. It is. They do a quite nice spice, or I got a tree one from there once, and it was lovely. Yeah. See, I went like during the pandemic. Me and Ocean got uh, spice bag, spice boxes out there, and like it was, I thought it was gonna be grand, but we got a takeaway, and obviously the box isn't as good of a uh, ventilation system as the or uh, whatever. So it uh, chips were soggy. soggy. Yeah. So it didn't turn out well. So me and Ocean now, if we're going to get, if we're not going for my street food, we get uh, iPod. Uh, like oh one. yeah. Um. Yes. So. Have we got one lemonade? No. Paddy Boos or my girlfriend's? Paddy Boos. Paddy Boos. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you can get your favourite shoes yes. tickets this weekend if you're out drinking. You've, you've dropped in everything, have you? You dropped in the tickets and Yeah, the tickets are behind the bar yes. and the tickets are up now. Or the so the posters are up now. Yes, there you yes, go. Yes. Yeah, you go. Get Ryan Gibney, get your tickets. <laughs> okay. Um yeah. Obviously like the shift in gore since pandemic has been very noticeable towards yeah. the pubs and everything like that. I think we've just all forgotten that we've gotten two years older. Yeah. And it's now socially unacceptable for any of us to be in McGovern's. Yeah, but I was in McGovern's a few times and the young crowd isn't there. Oh really? There's no young crowd in McGovern's oh. now. Or like I haven't been there in the last few months, but it was around Christmas time I was in there because I couldn't get into Pelicans and like it was just no young crowd. Like I, I was probably the youngest person there. So there's Remember big... the day we were in there a couple of months ago? We were meeting people in there and it was like maybe five o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. There was a match on or something, we were going to watch it. And there was like six young ones standing on the tables, like dressed in absolutely nothing. And they were like get down and they have to be kicked out at five o'clock in the afternoon yeah. we're like where have they been yeah. yeah so that was my last experience in McGovern's yeah yeah like I do like McGovern's it's a good it's a good spot to kind of you know what you're getting like there is good, good music there and obviously it makes a very sound band sound band on the door like yeah. yeah so you do know what you're getting but yeah but Jimmy Feminine has been very good to the podcast uh, yes. recently and yeah we will probably be heading there after the live show in 20 seconds yeah so exactly yeah. that's where the after party will probably be yeah um so next one, reading a book or watching a film? Um, watching mm-hmm. a film for the connection, I think. Yeah. yeah. Film. Yeah, I would be the same. Like I only read the odd book, and it's only when I have like a, I have an interest in the author or the topic, or like someone else has highly recommended it. Mm-hmm. So, like I listen to a lot of, as I said in the page on, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I prefer listening to an audiobook because. I always find when I'm in the car, I hate listening to the radio. I can't stand because the ad breaks and then yeah. the news because like they just don't. There's not really a flow of conversation with the uh, kind of presenters and then they go into music that might be shite and you know I also find myself clicking through and I can't find fucking anything. So I always listen to a podcast or an audiobook. Yeah. Now you don't have spin. That's the only thing you. Yeah. Spin has been spin great. Spin has not mentioned the war in Ukraine once. <laughs> Any single time I've ever listened to it, it has never mentioned the war. And I'm like, do you know what? It's actually a nice break. Positive vibes on Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I drive off the Dublin now, I will put on Spain. Okay. I find it, find it is good. No, it is. Uh, there are melters on the radio station. <laughs> but generally, when I'm listening to it, it's like before seven o'clock in the morning. So it's just music before seven, which mm. is great. Yeah. And then when I'm on my way home, that like from work at like half eight, nine, that nighttime show is grand as well. So. But the lads in the morning are very funny, though. 
the two lads. Yeah, they are, but I would only get like five, ten minutes of them, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, on this whole topic of listening to stuff in the car, uh, you've been listening to My Therapist Goes to Me with Joanne McNally. Yeah, so I only recently started listening to it because I drove to Mayo last weekend and <laughs> West of Ireland radio stations are fucking shocking. <laughs> So I decided I'd put on a podcast and it was the first one that came up and it is hilarious. I've been listening to it non-stop. She's hilarious. Very intelligent woman, isn't she? Who? Joanne. Joanne. Mm. Who does she do it with? Vogue Williams. Oh, wow. Okay. Are best they good mates. together? Yeah, they're best mates. Oh, mm. I didn't know that. That's yeah. the sight of Vogue. I didn't know that. Because I appreciate um, Joanne. She's a lot. She's, she's very clever. Yeah. And the thing is, is that, like, this sounds really bad, but I can't stand Vogue Williams when you're looking at her. Yeah. But when you can't see her, it's great. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> but, like, she she talks sense, like, she's not... Ah, well, it's not really good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is any podcast really talking any sense? Fair enough, fair enough. You know? Yeah, yeah. Very, very talking to your shy Yeah, very little on there. <laughs> but like they get on very well and they're good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. great. And Mel went to see them live. Did you, would you go to see them live now if you would? Um, you I think it's just Joanne does her own comedy show. Oh, mm. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think she was in Bigger Street, was it? She was everywhere. Went to Wexford and Watford, she's, I think. She's done a whole like UK and Irish tour. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, so it brings down to, well, if we're talking about comedy gigs, uh, a concert or a comedy gig? Mm. I'm gonna to have to say comedy gig. Um, you leave a comedy gig, a good comedy gig. You leave with a just a lighter feel. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, like, yeah. No, I stand by that. Um, but you get something different, like yeah. that classic music gig last night. I know it's not the same as probably the gig that you were preparing <laughs> yeah. to, but I felt I was able to just. Yeah, but Michael, that's because if you've ever... So when you go to a classical musical thing with Michael, he just sits there like this. I just go and take it all in. Yeah, Michael doesn't, like... Yeah, you're nearly yeah. asleep. In, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I'm a big... And then it comes to the end and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> comes alive. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, though, I'm only... It's growing on me, though. I haven't... Remember when we went to Bonnie Bray and there was a choir with it? And I'd say for 15 minutes, they went, Oh, amen, oh, amen, oh, amen, oh, amen. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? I, like, that? I wasn't in the zone for that, though. I thought, just speak on once. Yeah. Once is enough. But what's annoying about classical concerts is your hands are raw after. Because you've been for like five <laughs> minutes straight. No, they play for like maybe 15 minutes, but then you have to tap for about five. And like, you're like, can we stop this now? Like, and you're looking around and everyone's still like, and you're like, my hands are close to bleeding now, can we yeah. stop? And yeah. it's just the thing you do, you have to do it. Yeah, it was the same there where like, obviously, I'm not a massive ABBA fan and they're past my generation. So, and then obviously coming at the end, everyone was up, dan like, we were in the sea of higher this year, you know, but everyone was up dancing and everything, like, and, Obviously, Roshan had to get me up because her and my dad were kind of dancing and everyone around me. And it's like, in the best of times, I don't dance. And uh, like, especially not for an Abba, 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 Abba tribute act where I'm surrounded by old ones. And it's like, right, what to do? I sway side to side and go, do this. Like, because I always find when I'm doing things, like, uh, I'm not sure if you watch Talladega Nights with uh, Will Ferrell. He's like in an interview and he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to do with my hands there. And it's just like, and it's like, right, I, I don't, I'm, I have no rhythm and no beat. It's like, look at the old ones, like, when are they talking? <laughs> so I, I was just going along with the old ones, like, okay, oh, please finish this. What were the favourite songs that went down so well last night? Oh, Dancing well, Queen. Dancing Party. Queen, that's when everyone, that's the first song that I think really got everyone up. And then, like, Water, Waterloo. Water was a big one. And yeah. then you'd swear, like, fucking Abba actually came onto the stage and Mamma Mia came on, like, all oh, the old ones are erupted, like. <laughs> Cause like you could tell, obviously they all fucking loved that. So they knew by the first note came, oh, came on. Like, what a beautiful feeling! Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's great. Some of them absolutely lost their marbles. It was yeah. gas now. Oh, but I, I went to a comedy gig, but I didn't expect. Why? Uh, you just have you been to comedy lately? I don't think I have. No. It's just when you have someone that is so funny, you just you leave. Yeah. And every problems don't matter or something. You know? Love to see Michael McIntyre. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Love to see him. Yeah. yeah. So I went, me and Rox went to our first comedy gig, um, Daryl Breen there around Christmas time. Oh. And it was unbelievable. First, my yeah. first comedy gig, and it was in the Vicar Street, and uh, Daryl Breen was just fucking hilarious. Because obviously I loved uh, Mock the Week and everything, and we used to have Daryl Breen's comedy uh, DVDs and stuff and watch them. Yeah, it was so, so good. And like, I was actually sore from laughing and smiling at And he's yeah. actually insanely clever. Like. Yeah, 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 he's so smart. And like, even for the whole second half, he was talking about how he was adopted through the land, the... Magnum uh, Laundry? Mag- yeah, he was adopted wow. through that. And how, yeah, and how he, his whole journey about getting to know, or find out who his family was and who his mother was. And it, like, the whole second half of the show was that. And it was brilliant. It, there was, he had a few punchlines in there, but like, it was largely serious and... Everyone loved it because he was talking about how, and he found out that he has like a lot of half brothers in, yeah. in I think it's Galway or somewhere. And like even before he met him, like one of the brothers, I think a few brothers might be big into rugby, and lads in the rugby team he saw telling me he looked like Daryl Green, uh, and they were like, "You found him." That's were, like, so funny. That's like, crazy. It was so good. Uh, so yeah, definitely after that, now I'm gonna try to go to a load of comedy yeah. and yeah. you know, I'm actually going to Tommy Tiernan and Helix. Uh, oh, you're so lucky. Uh, next oh month in May. Oh, you're so lucky. I can't wait to go see Tommy Tiernan. And the I Helix saw, is a perfect venue. Uh, that's where Ashley's graduation was. Um, he did a gig in Foxes. Yeah, but now he's a, that's event. a totally different Tommy Tiernan. Mm, yeah, it was a bit. Yeah. Cool. Like, like, he's ooh. joking about switching these yeah, stuff and stuff. Yeah, so, like, he doesn't do that like, now, but, yeah. like, he. The man is just. And just it was so really, out there. It was kind of awkward as well. Like, it was. I think there was, like, 200 people at it. Mm. And, like, he was just, like, it was really awkward because I knew most of the 200 people that were there and he's like pointing at people and like making kind of jokes about them and you're like oh this is just really awkward yeah, yeah. so I think maybe in a no this was a good while ago as you said he was like kind of a bit like a little risky but uh he probably would be better in a bigger audience where you can't necessarily yeah. pick people out. yeah no everyone knew yeah. yeah because me and Ocean actually have a busy month like oh, month of April month of May are actually very busy like obviously went to the concert in Tree last night we're back in Tree on Tuesday for which a little mix and <laughs> another one I'm, another one I'm being dragged to because Roisin <laughs> Roisin loves little mix and right. I'm taking up taking or leaving like I couldn't really care like, I said on the radio I probably would switch it uh, but yeah Roisin loves little mix and like standing tickets were available there and she was like basically like right, we're going and I was like fine uh, and then uh, the following week we're going to see Julie Eba and okay. wasn't for that love Julie Eba. Uh, and then what else do we have and then like the live show was on the 22nd yes and, and the biggest concert of biggest the world the <laughs> best, con- best <laughs> night of the year and then Tommy Tiernan and then in May wow. so busy or up and down in Dublin now, next next month in a bit um, yeah so looking forward to that yeah but uh, yeah definitely that'll be comedy gigs and uh, one more since we're honing in the comedy here Neil Denimere um, yeah. I have been you, raving about him. You're now his biggest fan. Converted. It's just because I never expected him to be as funny. Yeah. Um, so he's in Gory on this Sunday, the 1st of May. Can't go for something I can't say, but there you go. Yeah, I like Neil Denimer as well. We had it, like, like that when we had a DVD of Neil Denimer, like oh, 10 years ago, everyone was very good. Yeah. But it was recently on the two Johnny's podcast, and it was very funny. And, uh, oh, right. He was good on that yeah. now. Very um, good. Yeah, so moving on. Uh, so Will Ferrell or Adam Sander? Will Ferrell. Yeah. Will Ferrell, but I don't have a big... No, I tell you, Will Ferrell all day. I'm just yeah. thinking of those videos of him on Saturday Night Live, and he yeah. just does the whole, I don't know what I'm doing really well. <laughs> he yeah. just does not give a single fuck. Yeah. No, yeah. he's fucking hilarious. Like, yeah. I do love Adam Sandler as well, but Will Ferrell has the best comedy But movies. isn't Adam Sandler supposed to be like a bit of a prick? Is like, it? in real life. Isn't really? Isn't he a bit like, oh, thinks he's like... Yeah, probably. The shit, like... Yeah. And let's face it, he's not. Yeah. Yeah, I think Will Ferrell has a different kind of vibe off yeah. and like he just uh, has, He just does not care. Yeah, yeah. Let's go get it. Yeah, like I love the Will Ferrell movies like Step Brothers. Step Brothers is probably one of the funniest movies. Yeah, oh, yeah. I used to watch that on repeat yeah. when I was younger. And then Anchorman. Uh, Anchorman is I'm blind. Oh, like, I love that. funny. Um Pat Eganites as well. And uh, the other guys. I think the other guys are my favourite Will Ferrell movie I just because it's, uh, I've seen that. it's so cool. fucking it's him and Mark Wahlberg and just some of the it's just so like the storyline is so stupid and like some of the like <laughs> like minor storylines in it are just fucking hilarious and like some of the jokes in it are yeah. just gold. Yeah, definitely Will Ferrell. Um, next one. Um, the Late Late Show or the Graham Norton Show? Graham Norton Show. Yeah. Graham Norton. I haven't watched either in ages, but yeah. I think Graham Norton's on a break or he's not doing that at the moment. Yeah, I think I've seen an interview that is 
it's on a break or it's not happening at the moment. But yeah, Graham Norman is just so much more relaxed and like you can tell like the people are having a drink and having a laugh and they, yeah. there's no kind of restraint. I think if people it. on the late late had a drink, it might be okay. Yeah. Mm. Also, you know when they do like a depressing late late, you're like, oh, yeah. no one needs this. Things are depressing enough as it is and we know that people are going through a hard time, but... Yeah. They really need to do that. Yeah, same thing. Like that last year, whatever, like the whole way through the pandemic of the Late Late Show was just. Who's in the RT studio today? Yeah. Uh, Mario, can you come down for like a half an hour to talk to It's like, I oh, don't care about Mario. Mario's and stuff has been done today in the Late Show. Yeah. Late show. Why the fuck is he on it? And then, like, oh, let's get Mario Morris. Like, whoever's just hanging around in the yeah. ca- canteen or yeah. need to get, and it's just like, like get someone on, on a fucking video call yeah, and do it like, do it. like yeah. there's yeah. no no restrictions there yeah so yeah the lady show has been a fucking and they're trying four. to do like their best with like a t- obviously quite a tiny budget mm. because they never have anyone like paid no if they're not in the UK or Ireland yeah if they're not, not if they're not touring the show like yeah. they're not or, or, you, yeah. or you aren't going to get yeah. like yeah. at all for yeah, definitely. Where like Graham Norton has like proper mm. big people on it yeah all and, the like, time. and they're not like you, to have like all these big Hollywood stars and it's just there for a chat and like they're it feels like their guard is under walls and yeah. it's not like they're to fully promote them yeah. there for like Graham like they'll find funny stories about them like is, is this true and, and what I like as well is they have like usually kind of one not very well known person mm-hmm. and then like two or three big celebrities that all kind of vaguely know each other yeah. but like the other one person like goes in really well yeah uh, I saw a thing on TikTok the other day where it was Lady Gaga and do you know Dot from EastEnders mm. like the really really old lady yeah. and like um, Graham was like oh uh, Lady Gaga do you know this lady and she was like you don't have to pretend you know me dear it's great but like the interaction between the two of them was unreal yeah you never and, see that yeah yeah no, it's, yeah, definitely Graham Norman for the win um, after and, our, sorry and the red chair yeah it's gas uh, the red chair yeah. are fucking red ridiculous yeah. um, Apple or Android Apple Apple yeah 100%. Uh, I don't know how. Sa- how do people use Samsung? <laughs> I just don't understand it at all. My mum has, my mum's the only one in our house that has a Samsung. And she's there and like, it takes her about 25 presses of her phone to make a phone call. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know how people use Android. No offence to any Paper Tuesday listeners that's listening to no. this no. on an Android. <laughs> but, come on, man. And I think I you can buy live show tickets on Android. But... Yeah, you probably can, yeah. yeah. They're, that, they're good enough for that now. <laughs> Um, That's what I don't think I can do. Yeah, like I, I have someone, I have to do someone phone as an Android. I'm just like, where the fuck do I go? Yeah, they're so confused. I was thinking there, like my phone died on the way home from Shreve last night, and I had to use Roshin's man for the directions because we we did try to find the chipper that was off the main road, and I, my phone died, and I was just like, where the fuck is Maps? Uh, why is it so awkward? And then the same thing that Roshin's man has like the text enlarged, so it's like. <laughs> How can you see anything? I was trying to go on, like, try, like you know, you search on Google Maps and you have the map there and you have your OK or analysis. Yeah. It's like, I can't see anything on the map because the words are so big. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely Apple. Um, obviously, because I'm, I've nearly every Apple thing bar at Apple Watch. Like, I have an iPad, I have a MacBook, I have, a, I have an iPhone. I just cut. They, I'm fully invested. Uh, I'm fully invested yeah. and I'm fully brainwashed by Apple. Me too. Um, but do you know what I think is all about the Androids, in fairness to them? Good cameras, some of them. Yeah. Then um, why is it the One Plus phones? Yeah. They have unbelievable cameras. I'm saying like my brother Michael has the one of the top range Gal- uh, like Samsung Galaxies, and they do have really their cameras good. are very good. Yeah, yeah. And, like the Zoom on them are very good. But then like when they go to use uh, Snapchat and it's just like a potato. It's yeah. Just, like, I don't know. Maybe I think there could be some inclusion there with Apple that like they're making those apps like, purely for themselves. Purely for yeah. like they have systems with those apps that's like don't let Android have a good camera on it because yeah. it is like the cameras good on those phones. It's just the yeah. functionality cross between the too. apps don't yeah, fully yeah. connect well. So yeah, mm-hmm. and that's so. And the last question, always is a blur. Oasis. Oh, Oasis. Yeah. Oh, I don't listen. I don't. I, don't, I can't. Know, I can't think of a blur song at all. I heard um something on the radio the other morning. I don't know what they were talking about, but it was, um, there was a band called Blue. Blue, yeah. Yeah, and it was when they just come out. Some, it was like oh, it was so. I can't remember what it was for, but it was like some like government wanted to book Blur for like. I don't know, some ceremony or something. And anyway, they accidentally booked Blue. And the lads from Blue thought that they were unreal being flown like first class over, I think it was like Japan or Taiwan or somewhere like really random. And uh, they, 
<clears throat> arrived at set to do this song and they were like warming up or whatever and they started playing their song and they're like no no don't do that one do this one and they're like that's blur that's not us <laughs> That but one. it was some secretary booked like the computer. Oh, album. that was so awkward. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, wow. I can't remember what it was for, but it was like some big ceremony. like ceremony or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's guys. Um, that Shane, how long did that take? Uh, you to do the quiz? Yeah. Uh, two minutes. I had a few different that, questions that I like to ask off, but like, yeah, I was just like this or that. Like, what can I do to fill up the space? You, um, you. That was incredible. There you go. You have a very um, you have a mind like a speeding train. <laughs> if I'd say Thank so. you very much, Michael. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. Was when me and Mark had to do a Patreon together. I was like, right, because uh, I took it from when Rory was on. And he said he loved the game, so I was like, right. So that's a good uh, yeah. insight to people. People like the games, <laughs> so I was like, anytime I'm gonna be on the front of the camera, I'm gonna bring a game to it. So no. oh, well, you've done it well. It was uh, Donatella Versace. That's what it was. Yeah, it was for a fashion show. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's gas. That's incredible. Yeah, in twenty twenty one, and it was in Milan for their big show. Fashion week. That's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was something. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> it's Easter. Just, yeah. Uh, it's Easter. Just sort of. So I was going to give you one of these ones. I love uh, like wacky traditions from around the world. Uh, apparently, there was whip cracking in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Um, so there was this whip like cracking. yeah where the like you'd have two Just whips and you'd go t -t 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 for Easter yeah apparently so they're a bit weird over there though so there you go but they even do it like as then a spin off they've done it in what do you call it um, Australia there's videos of it on Australia um, there's a Russian one here but we're going to skip that because they're invading countries at the moment um, the Easter Bilby from Australia um, what's that those, so this is a bilby so instead of this isn't really a strange condition or condition, <laughs> uh, tradition but uh yeah they just instead of an easter bunny they have an easter bilby which oh, is like an animal, uh, an animal okay. and it's actually an, an endangered animal, animal so it's trying to show how um you know it's an important it's one. like a little rodent thingy yeah aussies can scoff at will knowing that every bite they take is helping to save an endangered species okay Strange article. The world's biggest Easter omelette in France. That's more like it. Uh, the residents of Howe, H-A-U-X, usually crack more than 4,500 4, eggs into a gigantic pan. And they have a massive Easter omelette. It serves a 1,000 people. This is my sort of thing. And then people gather in the main square and they have the... That's... If I'm doing something, Gordy, I'm making a massive omelette. And everyone's going to Surely, Scott, that's against a lot of health and safety rules. It might be, but I still can't do it. You know, do you know what? If I was doing it, I'd make a massive scone. Like a, a scone the size of this Michael room. Michael loves scones. I do, yeah. And here's your scone, Fab. And here you go, Matty. And, and yeah, <laughs> this is, that's what I want to do. In Hungary, women dress up in traditional clothes on Easter Sunday and they get splashed with water. Uh, but it certainly beats getting whipped. So there's a woman in Hungary getting splashed with water. That's not splashed with water. That's been drained in water. <laughs> there you go. And what has the witches of Easter week in Finland? Ooh, Finland. Halloween comes early in Finland where children dress up as witches. Well, there you go. Tobacco trees in Papua New Guinea. Fair play to them. Ah, yes. The gold crucifixion and flagellation in the Philippines. <laughs> Fair play to them. I think they, they do the same in uh, Brazil. They would take it just that little bit further. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just a little bit too far. Anyway. And do they actually put someone up on a cross? Yeah, I'm not. In some places, they do go with the nails as well for a little while. Why? Why? Life is tough enough as it is. Yeah, you don't true. Need nails exactly. your hands. We don't need. Yeah, here, here. Uh, the Easter Bunny sees red in Greece, so that is where the multicolored eggs in Greece. Actually, Greece, you'll only find red eggs because red is the color of life. Hmm, interesting. Egg is a symbol of renewal of life as well. A uh, criminal intent in Norway. Easter time is crime time in Norway. Television channels run crime shows. <laughs> that is so weird. <laughs> People across the country escape into their mountain cabins and spend the weekend with the whodunit television shows and books. Even the milk cartons carry short detective stories. It started when there was a novel, novel release, released in 1923. There you go. Uh, the Great Easter Bunny Hunt in New Zealand, a little bit more, more, more normal. Oh, actually, no. They're actually bunnies that they... <laughs> they go and they go on the, It's the Great Easter Bunny Hunt. <laughs> the idea is to rid farmlands of invasive pests with over 500 hunters vying for the coveted prize of 3,500 uh, New Zealand dollars. And with over 10,000 like rabbits meeting their maker each year, 
the Easter Bunny sensibly gives this corner of New Zealand a miss. I think they're taking a religious element to Easter a bit too far, bringing them to Jesus. Like, oh, wow. Well. <laughs> meet their maker, like, it's a fucking extreme. Poor oh, rabbits. I think, they, I think there's no religion there. I think it's uh, get rid of those darn rabbits. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit sad though because the kids are like these two bunnies here well it's dead yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like what happens at a, a kids party when they bring the bunny there like, fucking get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, money for myself put a knife into him yeah, yeah. sorry I'm getting a lot of notifications out of like all my soccer after on the album like, Premier League is starting in Super Sunday oh yes um, yes interesting did Everton beat Man United I did 1-0 all oh, right. Fat Frank is bringing everything back. So Lamp, Lamp, Lamp Frank, Frank, yeah, Frank Lampard is. Fat <laughs> Frank. <laughs> oh, does he know? He must be nearly forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah, maybe forty. Yeah, he's in trouble. Could be get, trouble. Could be getting sacked. Yeah. Could be getting sacked. Oh, was he managing or? Yeah, he's managing. He's been. Oh, sorry, I thought he was playing. Yeah. No, no, he's been. A, he's been retired for years. So he's, this entire team is managed now. Like, okay. So yes. I'm glad you said rugby earlier because if you said it's soccer, it would have been a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this has been one of the most wholesome podcasts. There you go. Wholesome. Yeah, I, don't I think, think it Mark has. would agree. No, yeah. no, because no, he's not here. Mm. But it just has been a very wholesome podcast. So yes. I'm glad we've been able to do justice without our other half. Um, <laughs> So you've uh, been great. Uh, go on and buy your tickets. And thank you, Shane. Thank and you. happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. Easter. Yeah. Don't yeah. flagellate yourselves and don't <laughs> flagellate other people either. All right. Don't kill any bunnies. Yes. Yeah. Ta-ta and farewell. <laughs>